It's wonderful to have you join us for devotion today. We are wrapping up our discussion of the first article of the Apostles' Creed, which says, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Over the past two weeks, we have been walking through the first article of the Creed and Luther's explanation of it. And hopefully you've started to notice a pattern, especially through Luther's explanation of the Creed. We've talked about how God provides us with everything we have. We've talked about how he uh, defends and protects us. A majority of Luther's explanation is just a reflection on all the wonderful things that, that God has done for us. And then finally, at the very end, Luther says, For all this, for all that God has done for you and me as his creatures, it is my duty. And finally, Luther is diving into what our response should be. And yesterday we talked about the first part. It is our duty to think and praise. And today we're going to talk about our duty to serve and obey. But before we talk about that, I want you to notice just how meaningful it is that that, that response that our obligation is at the very end of the explanation. I think as parents, we know that it is all too tempting to put those obligations at the very beginning. As parents, earthly parents, it's tempting to predicate our relationship with our children on our own God-given authority. In other words, we're tempted to say to our children, you should do this because I said so. (laughs) But Luther makes it clear that is not how God interacts with us. God's relationship with his creation is predicated on his willingness and his ability to pour out his gracious love on his wonderful creation, especially the crown of his creation, all human creatures. Even though God's probably only the only person who can say, do this because I said so, he doesn't. That in itself says something tremendously wonderful about the character of our God. So then, how should we respond in obedience and service? In the explanation of Luther's Catechism, I think it provides a helpful outline for what this service looks like, for what this obedience looks like. It says, I serve and obey God when I use all these gifts within my various walks of life for my well-being and that of my neighbor and the wider creation. God put me into a network of relationships with people around me whom I am called to serve. God gives me freedom to pursue my vocations in accordance with the skills and aptitudes He has given me. In other words, how do we serve and obey God? By serving and loving all those whom God has placed into our life just as God has first served and loved us. I would invite you to please pray with me. Heavenly Father, out of your fatherly divine goodness and mercy, you have created me and endowed me with all that I have in this body and life. And you continue to defend me from all danger and guard and protect me from all evil. Receive now my thanks and praise for all of your gifts and shape my life to serve and obey you and the callings which you have given me. Through Jesus Christ, my Lord. Amen.